from your perspective, has AI been at all or technology as a whole? I mean, one of the things we've been covering on my side is, is looking at AI and its inherent racism that we've seen as of late. And so to the point where I think, I think Google Vision shut down their entire AI division and yeah. has stopped sending or selling, stopped helping cities with crime the data because inherently it's, yeah. 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 How do you think about AI? How do you think about, you know, is there any technology that can help in this effort? Well, I mean, are you talking specifically about the death penalty or are we talking about uh, other- in Crime in general. in general. Yeah, well, look, I mean, we, you know, there, there's certainly good applications to artificial intelligence. I'll give you one. In San Francisco, we work with a Stanford computational lab to actually take race and other proxies of race away from police reports so that prosecutors in the general crime filing team wouldn't know what the race of the person was when they made the first decision. So for instance, uh, let's say that a robbery occurred and I'm going to use a create obviously a fictitious type of setting. You have a green person uh, that committed the robbery, but the prosecutor doesn't know that it's a green person. Right? The prosecutor's looking at the evidence and all they can see is that, you know, witnesses describe the assailant in this robbery as a person unknown race that was 200 pounds, six feet tall, wearing a white t-shirt and blue jeans. Another person describes it as a person of a slightly different tonality of skin that weighs about 160 pounds and had uh, long hair and it had black pants and a beige shirt or a beige t-shirt. And the prosecutor looks at this and says, well, I really can't make a decision here because I'm not going to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the person who's in custody did this, right? So they mark in their system, they say, this case cannot be filed for insufficient evidence. Mm -hmm. Then they unmask the report, and the report now shows clearly a photo of a green person and a video of the green person that is the one in custody committing the robbery. Now the prosecutor said, aha, uh -huh, I have enough evidence now to move forward. I'm going to move the case. So now they, they move forward with the case. And that would be an appropriate way of altering your original decision. But let's take the same set of circumstances. And now the prosecutor on mask, and you have a really fussy video that shows what it looks like a green person, but not no facial, which are very common, right? Especially a lot of those business cameras in some places are antiquated, you know, the shot may be bad, the person was wearing a hat, whatever. But the prosecutor said, wait a minute, this is an area where green people commonly commit crimes and green people in his or her mind are more likely to commit crimes than not. So he moves forward and they kind of, you know, obviously they don't say that on their rationale, but they say, well, you know, we have a video that looks very similar to the person who's being described. And this is an area where green people are regular commit crimes, so therefore we want to move forward with the case. That case would be an inappropriate way of proceeding with a case that would require supervisory approval and that would be denied. So we use artificial intelligence in that case to first of all do what humans would have a very hard time doing, which is completely decoupling race and all the proxies of race, right? So neighborhoods, sometimes names. I mean, Juan Hernandez, we most of us would think of it. Latinx, right. right? Or Leroy, right. we may think of a African-American, right? So all that gets taken out of the mix. Uh, and that first decision cannot be removed. It stays in the system. And I actually, uh, my commitment was that we would make that technology available to other DAs and that we would share the results of our process over years with researchers and policymakers to see how we can get rid of uh, implicit bias. So that's a good way of using artificial intelligence. Another thing that I did is when Prop 64 passed, that was a legalization of marijuana, the initiative also actually said that the person that had been convicted could go through the application process to have their record sponge or reduced, uh, depending on the conditions of their conviction, but they had to do it on their own. And we looked at it and we said, you know, we learned that about less than six, seven percent of all the people that qualify for record expungement ever actually apply for it because it's cumbersome, it takes time, it takes money. Right. And poor people don't get to do that, right? But right. we also know that a criminal conviction is going to keep you from getting employment, housing, a whole bunch of things. 
So in looking at the proposition very closely, we say, it, you know, it says that the person has to do it himself, but it doesn't prohibit the DA from doing it, right, in mass. So we decided we would do this in mass, and we started it with very laborious, right? And we realized that this is going to take a long time, and I'm trying to push other DAs to do it, and they say, hey, look, I would like to do it with, but I can't because I don't have the resources. So we went to Code for America, and we developed artificial intelligence to actually review criminal records, determine the people that qualify, and complete all the paperwork necessary to get the relief. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.